Hey, hey, everyone. This is the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. There was a time when you might have cared that your potential date was a Scorpio, or maybe you swept left on someone who was a vegetarian, or perhaps it was a deal breaker that the guy you started dating wasn't a great texter. So you break it off saying, "Uh, you know what? I don't want someone who doesn't communicate with me. And all the while, all your loved ones are telling you, you know what? You should never settle. You are such a catch. Never, never settle. But then the pandemic hits, right? And the world is in disarray and you are quarantined for months. So now you start thinking about things a little bit differently. You think to yourself, well, you know, the Scorpios aren't that bad. And you know, I could learn to like vegetables and oh, that poor texter isn't as bad as someone who doesn't talk in person at all. So suddenly you're left with a different perspective and value things you ignored possibly before. And you decide in the end, that maybe you should settle. Now, settling refers to letting go of things that are important to who you are and what you believe in. But what if what is important to you and what you believe in changes and shifts? And this is what I am seeing a lot lately. And exactly what the pandemic is causing a lot of people to reflect on and look at now how to manage not only what we want, but also how we manage our expectations around what we want currently. And here's the three things that I've been seeing often. Um, You know, right now, maybe in your life before, there were a lot of choices. There were a lot of shiny objects. You were swiping all the time, a lot of distractions. Well, those distractions, you weren't really, like they were causing you to not pay attention to some very fundamental and important things. So by settling in, you are now forced to look at things in a deeper meaning and deeper value. So the other thing I'm finding is that you're cherishing more what you have. You know, maybe you took a lot for granted before. The disposable mentality has shifted to being grateful for things you see in potential partners. And you can really take the time now to notice positive qualities to strengthen the connection. And finally, people are kind of going back to basics in the way that they're communicating. And people are actually working through things and letting go of some of the small stuff. I mean, things that used to be a big deal before, I think people are saying, you know what, it's not so bad anymore. Here's what's really important. And people are really focusing on communicating. I saw this with my client that I worked with recently. Now she met her boyfriend before COVID hit. And she has a history of a lot of anxiety. She had some abandonment issues, obviously, that was going on that was causing a lot of the anxiety. So she was in constant turmoil with this guy, knowing that every little thing, every, every like text she didn't receive or any little thing that he would do, she said, oh, there it is. He's going to leave me. It's not going to work out. And I can't tell you how many times I had saved the relationship by just like bringing her down to earth and really look at things more like what was her ghosts of the past versus what was reality. But then COVID hit and they are kind of hunkering down and they're in a committed, beautiful relationship. And I have to say, I am so impressed with their relationship. It's one of the strongest that I've seen in a long time. And why this is, is because they really have learned how to communicate some of their fears and anxiety and focus on the fundamental things that go into a relationship. And it's stronger than it has ever been before. So, you know, by settling, you're not giving up who you are, but rather you're shifting your perspective on what's important to you currently. And ultimately, this could provide an opportunity to create deeper and more meaningful connections with someone special. And you have to manage expectations around what's important to you. So back by popular demand, uh, this amazing guy, you might have heard of him. His name is Dr. John Gray, who is going to join me yet again in talking about some fundamental differences and how to redefine roles and expectations to attract and keep 
your right soulmate, especially during these uncertain times. And just for those of you who don't know him, he is the author of the most well-known and trusted relationship book of all time. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. Oh my God, I, I feel like I grew up with that book. That's where I learned a lot about relationships. So it's super special to have him here today. He's written a lot of other books since then, but overall he helps men and women understand each other, respect their differences in both personal and professional relationships. And he, of course, he's appeared all over the place. He's been on Oprah today, CBS this morning, the charisma quotient here today. <laughs> Welcome, Dr. John Gray. Hi. Hey, hi. I'm so happy to be with you again. I know. Me too. Me too. Well, you know, it's funny. And I think I, well, I just shared this with you. Your episode that we did on the differences in how men and women date was one of the most popular episodes. So those of you listening, if you haven't heard it, you got to check it out. And I think, I think the reason why these conversations are so popular is that I think, and I'm knowing from working with men and women so often that we think that the opposite sex is so different and, or sometimes they think they're just like us. And so when we talk about these differences in a really kind of real way, it gives people, I think, hope that, oh, that's why he did this or, oh, so she struggles with this just like all the other girls I dated, you know? And so it's, it, it's good. And I think now with COVID hitting, everyone's looking at these relationships in a really different way. And I don't know if you have found this, but I just, I'd love to hear your perspective on it too. Well, first of all, what you said in the beginning of this conversation was fantastic. Um, oh. I haven't heard anybody else say it, but I'm a big fan of it. It's something called settling down, <laughs> you know, yeah. we, we're all fine with, okay, are you ready to settle down? But settling down means settling. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be a doormat. It means exactly. sometimes our expectations, our perspectives, our requests, our requirements are unrealistic. And so we need to come back to realistic expectations or we end up being alone. And, and that's where Mars Venus comes in so handy because it's not the only way of looking at things because there's so many other ways we get our expectations, but be faulty. But when it comes to men and women, women often think, oh, the ideal man's going to be like me. Exactly. <laughs> he's going to text like me and he's going to talk like me and we're going to share feelings like me and, and vice versa. A guy's going to think, oh, she's going to, you know, not have these emotional ups and downs. She's going to be logical and reasonable. You know, she can take a good joke and a pat on the shoulder and, like a buddy, you know, and that right. I remember my wife, Bonnie, you know, the first time I did, we were dating even, and I made some one of these guy jokes and, you know, where, where the guy says, just kidding. And <laughs> she was so angry with me. She got out of the car and walked away. And my reaction was, oh, I have to give up myself to be with you. Uh, and she said, no, you don't have to give up yourself. Go, that's guy talk. Go talk with your guys that way. But when you're with me, don't talk that way. Uh, you know, it's, you don't have to give up yourself, but it means adjust yourself appropriately to situations. And she really taught me that. She would just not stand for this tendency that we guys do all the time, which is, oh, just joking, just kidding, just teasing. She didn't <laughs> like that. Now, maybe some women are okay with that, but I've noticed a lot of women aren't okay with that. And, uh, you know, we just need to find out what works for us and be able to communicate that in a way <laughs> that, that works. And ironically, you might hear, you know, I could re re retrospectively think about the way she communicated it. And the reality is you don't always have to be so nice. You just have to not do it in such a way that you're trying to change the other person. You know, uh. one of the best things in dating, I believe, is to have a different point of view not always be a people pleaser, not always try to adjust, try to anticipate what they're going to like and what they're not going to like. You know, I know I do that a bit on, on Facebook when, when I see things, I'm kind of like afraid to, to agree with somebody. I still have a people <laughs> pleaser in me, but I'm just protecting my brand from being too political. But when it comes to personal relationships, there's that tendency of wanting to always sort of create a harmonious point of view, be alike the other person, but that actually kills passion we need to really be authentically ourselves, but the secret is being able to do that without the intention of changing the other person's point of view. See, that's what nobody likes. And it's refreshing when somebody can have a point of view and where, you say, where she would say something like, or he would say, well, that makes sense. I can see why you might think that. 
have a completely different way of looking at it, you know, and blah, 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 blah. And always sort of validating the other point of view so that they're okay. They're, they're, they're not like threatened that you're trying to change me or you're trying to say your ideas are better than mine, but that we can have a space and it's that distance that creates the connection. And you yes. know, what you also said that I really loved was, you know, for some couples and, and my experience is not all, but for some couples, they're getting the opportunity uh, right now to take responsibility for their happiness because they don't have all these things in the outer world and they're not running around so much and they're appreciating what they have. And it's, it's interesting, the example you gave was a client who was single. And I mentioned to you, a lot of single people actually are beginning to appreciate <laughs> that what's available because uh, mm -hmm. distance makes the heart grow fonder. But people who are in relationships are really often having big troubles. There's some, I have friends yeah. that have good communication techniques. So this is like vacation for them, or at least even if they're under financial stress, they're able to be there for each other because they understand communication skills. And communication skills are, if somebody has a reaction, which is different from mine, I don't make them wrong. See, that's mm -hmm. the whole dynamic is, you know, maybe your partner is more afraid and you say, oh, that's ridiculous. You know, oh, you're buying into that whole thing or don't worry, it's going to be okay. And there's nothing wrong with saying, don't worry, after a long conversation and a hug. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. You, you, you don't want to dismiss people's feelings. And that's what we tend to do. And we don't want to dismiss people's point of view. Uh, I'm thinking about another woman who her husband you know, she said, he's drinking the Trump Kool-Aid. I can't stand to be around oh, him. And oh. I, you know, I, I, could, I appreciate her thinking there. I had to help her understand that for me as a practice, I, I don't watch that much news, but I watch an equal amount of MSNBC and Fox and CNN. I like to see them all. And it's amazing how everybody's got a different point of view. And, <laughs> and some people are hard for me to really hear, okay? And I just yes. have to say, all right, let me analyze why it's so hard for me to hear. It's because there's this attachment that they think the way I think. And mm -hmm. if you can let go of that, then you can go, okay, based upon the information that they're being fed and what they're believing, then their responses are really quite appropriate. It's just, what do you believe? What is your source of experience? You know? And what is your experience of life? You know, that determines a lot of our reactions and our, our experience of growing up in our childhood and so forth. These are all things that affect us. And so if you could really understand that, we would be so much more compassionate and empathetic and understanding, which is what we hope to achieve through good communication. But if you have that tendency already, it makes the communication easier. And that should be what we strive for, is understanding, not resisting. Yeah, I love everything that you just said and recapped. And I think also what this, state that we're in where we're all kind of you know hunkered down and pulled in and focused is that there's this recalibration happening even in a sense of how we communicate you know I, it was funny i was just talking to somebody and she's like you know i don't know if this is the right time to work on dating because you know before all this happened i was i was kind of okay you know i was socializing i mean i wasn't getting asked out or anything but i was socializing i had a lot of guy friends and everything and she was doing a lot of double talk right and she's like but uh, but it would be nice to have like an emotional connection with a guy but you know i was okay i was okay i was okay well now covid hits and that was stripped away from her so now she's left with complete isolation isolation and not being okay. Whereas before being social was her distraction and a shield for her to prevent her from getting hurt and rejected. And she, you know what I, I mean? I love the point you're making. Absolutely brilliant. It's the, and, and particularly it's being vulnerable means to be aware of the part of me that needs and would appreciate enormously an intimate relationship, not making everything nice. And it's hard for women to connect with that part of them that needs a relationship because that seems like weakness. And it's also the idea of needing someone means that you're gonna be needy. And you mm -hmm. can need someone and not be needy. Okay, there's a big, big difference. If I come home and my wife is happy to see me, joyful to see me, that means she needs me. 
Okay. Yes. If she doesn't need me, it's like, oh, he's here. <laughs> and, <laughs> Who's this guy? Yeah. And, and the, the role model here, and I watched how Bonnie did this. It was, uh, this is how I clearly know the distinction. I share this is I have a, a tendency to be in the sessions and go over time. Okay. That's part of my makeup. She knows that, whatever. But when we have parties at the house, she would give me jobs to do. Okay, so my job is is uh, the drinks and the decorations and the ice for the drinks. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to do that. So the party starts at seven, and I arrive home at seven, and I haven't I don't have ice, I don't have drinks, and I haven't put up the decorations. And she and I arrive, and she's she says, "Oh, you're so late! I can't believe it!" And she's all upset with me, and I did it, and I did it myself anyway, or I'll do it, or don't bother. So that's needy. That means I needed you and you disappointed me and you mm. failed me. Mm -hmm. Now here's what she turned into after she started learning about her femininity, her vulnerability, also how her feelings affect me and how she can bring out the best of me. Because that's part of the secret is when you can appreciate a man for what he can do, he will always do more. <laughs> when he can punish him, he will do that. Amen, less. amen. I, yes. Okay. So, so anyway, so this was, the not, this was not needy. I came home. And I remember it so clearly because, oh, I'm late. I know she's going to be upset. And I got home around six or around seven o'clock. And I come into the house. Some guests had already arrived. And she says, he's here. He's here. It's not too late. You can still go get the drinks and the ice. <laughs> and then I came <laughs> home and the decorations. Really? The decorations? Yes, it's wonderful. You know, get the ladder. <laughs> and so she just created the opportunity for me to be successful. And that's, a, that's an art, you know, that's a, a dance that we have to learn dance steps for is, is to, is to re recognize what does my partner need the most for, from me? And I'm not a doormat. I'm not adjusting myself. I'm actually wise. And how can I provide for them the best support so they can be the best person they are? And then if I want more, I can ask for it and get it. Because when you ask and you're not coming from a needy place, then you're not, you're saying, this would feel good to me. I'd really like this. Uh, would you try to do this next time? And you're not coming from a place of, if you don't do it, I'm going to be really, really unhappy. Mm. See, that's a demand. And often, often women don't realize how demanding that is to a man, how controlling he will feel, whether she's, her intent is never to control. I won't say never, but generally she doesn't realize that she, that, that feels controlling to a man because his whole sense of major source of happiness for him in the relationship is that he provides happiness for her. You know, yeah. this is the dynamic that's very, very big between men and women. Not that my wife isn't happy when I'm happy, but if I'm like really happy and she's in a bad mood, she gets in a worse mood. <laughs> so now if, if I'm unhappy and she's happy, I become happier because I tend to always identify as a man with the masculine side of me, which is testosterone. And testosterone goes up when I feel successful. So if she is happy, I immediately feel successful. Now this is most men. There's always gonna be a few exceptions to everything I say, because many men are more bonded to their female side. Mm -hmm. And so they're not always gonna to relate to the Mars stuff. But if they look a little deeper, I can point out to them many ways they are from the male side. But women often say, you know, I feel like I'm from Mars when you talk about these men. And I go, well, you are, in a sense, you have a male side. And our culture today pushes women to the male side to a great extent. And in a sense, pushes them away from their female side, as if that's weakness, or that makes them, you know, old fashioned, or they can't have that. And the truth is, they can have both. You can have the male side and the female side. And that's what we as teachers are trying to help people do. Yes. Okay. I'm so glad you brought up that whole um, male female role and that independence thing. I want to talk about that, and especially in relation to what's going on now, because again, now here, you know, I think unfortunately that some now that we're in isolation, a lot of these independent women or ones that I can, you know, I can do it all myself 
are having even a harder time with learning how to receive and being in their feminine and that kind of thing. And so again, like this is a time to really like work on that. Like I, the, the woman that I was talking to, as I was sharing with you, I said, you know, what if you used online dating as a way to practice your feminine, to practice flirting, not use it to get a darn boyfriend. That's not, you're not even there yet. Like what if this was just a way of building your skills and your muscle so that when you come out of this, you'll be even better than you were before. You'll be in shape. And she's like, it, it, she just kind of froze. Like she didn't have anything to say because, you know, everything I said, there was kind of an excuse. And really what her excuse was, was the fear, the fear of being rejected. And so again, like, I, I think this, this form of independence that a lot of these women, I call them the chiefs. That's actually one of my dating archetypes that I talk about a lot is that inherently they want to be cherished, they want to be loved, they want to be that woman who is being taken care of, but they're scared of having the man like see them differently, you know? And so I don't know if we could talk about a little bit of that dynamic too, especially in this world. Well, I love what you're saying there with for the chief because uh, for herself, for her, what she wants is a man who's a chief. And if he's not a chief, she's not attracted to him. Therefore, she assumes that if she's not a chief, men won't be attracted to her. But actually, right. <laughs> men are always attracted to women who have less, less of a quality that he has more of. A simple thing is every man, generally speaking, 99% want to be taller than the woman they're with. And most women want the man to be taller See, that's just, that's a, a power balance, okay? And women, in a sense, want, the, want to be gooder, if I can use that word, yeah. <laughs> up, than the man. That's why bad boys, some women who have low self-esteem are really attracted to really bad guys because they get to feel gooder, okay? Yes. So in a similar way, uh, that's why I tell men, by the way, never, ever compete with a woman with who's the best in terms of love and good. Oh, you're much better than me. Uh. <laughs> Don't compete that way. Uh, but, you know, a man wants to feel if women, and I, this is the point I'm making. If a man is very attracted to a woman that he's stronger than physically, mm -hmm. and a woman is attracted to a man who is physically stronger than her, a protector in a sense, is a, a broad chest or some skill, some power that can provide safety and security for her. Having said that, I'm speaking to, to the CEO woman, is what you have to recognize is your fear that you will not be seen as lovable to a man. Yes. Maybe to your business, you've got to be this in charge person. But in an intimate relationship, the rules completely change. He has turned on to you more if he experiences that you need his help in some way, that you are being revealing yourself in a way that you wouldn't reveal to somebody else, that means you're saying he's really special. See, he gets, he gets the look inside there. And what you'll, sh what you'll see quite often, again, is kind of a, sometimes a bit of a irrational, crazy person. Okay, so that's sometimes in there. If you've been pushing it down, when it comes up, it's a mixture of all kinds of feelings, which you would be terribly embarrassed to show anybody because you've already developed your logical masculine side and this stuff is too cuckoo. So you just simply say to him, you know, I just need to sort my feelings out. I'm so happy that you're listening. I just need about 20 minutes of this or 10 minutes of this to sort it all out. And it might even sound crazy, but then I'll feel really good. And what you have to know is the man will go, okay, all right, a little crazy. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Why is that? Why do men like a little crazy? Explain we're that. we're smarter. We get to uh, be smarter. Oh, because you get to be smarter. Yes, we get to be stronger. Mm -hmm. That's why we're always giving solutions, which we shouldn't do. Yeah. But we should learn how to be better, which is to provide the understanding she needs. But there's another part of a little crazy in women is, first of all, selfishness. All negative emotions are based on selfishness. As much as anybody doesn't want to admit it, it's, I wanted this and I didn't get it. Jealousy, I want this and I didn't get it. Hurt, I wanted you to treat me a certain way, I didn't get it. It's all based on our frustration of our desire. The unmet desire gives rise to negative emotions. But there's nothing more satisfying to a man than a woman who wants him. See, when a woman wants him, it's sex is all about man fulfilling the woman's need, even though it may seem like it's for men, because often women will say, well, he doesn't take care of my needs, just himself. No, 
if he understood what your needs are and he got messages of how to do it without feeling like he was a loser, then he would do it. <laughs> you know, men often their minds are blown when they take my course on sex. Really, that's what makes them happy because they don't understand women. But if a man understands what women need, he is he's jumping through hoops to do that. A, a simple example would be if if we were all taught that uh, if you can walk on your hands upside down, women have orgasms watching you, every man would be in the gym learning how to walk <laughs> on his hands. I mean, this is, this is the biology of men and women. When I'm successful providing a positive experience for someone I love, particularly a woman, if I'm heterosexual, then my testosterone levels go up. And when testosterone goes up in men, well-being increases, cortisol levels drop, he gets to be in present time and he's free to a great extent of any conditioning of his past. That's the great thing about it because to a certain extent when we're stressed, blood flow goes away from the prefrontal cortex back into the limbic system where we're just reacting based upon conditioning. We say, oh, that's how I feel, but actually that's just, a, you know, imagine you got this animal inside of you who takes control. And if we can stay in our present time and the prefrontal cortex, for men, that only happens if his testosterone is 10 to 30 times higher than a woman's. So that creates a context where a woman can go, oh, it just seems so superficial to say all these nice things about him. Why would I do that? I said, because that's what he needs to hear. Just as he could say, seems superficial for me to tell her I love her every day and give hugs and hold her hand and plan dates. If she wants to do that, why can't she do it? Yeah. You know, we, we have to recognize as human beings, we have vulnerable, sensitive needs that make us feel good, you know, holding hands. I hold her hand, not because she's a child and I need to walk her across the street. I give hugs, I give compliments, I reassure on her hair and how beautiful she looks, you know, I'm considerate, caring. These are things that increase femininity. Yes. See, femininity is not tough, it's sensitive. We all, I have a sensitive side, but I have to be careful that it's not more sensitive than her. See, if I become more feminine than her, it makes her more masculine. And she doesn't like that. No, she didn't like it at she all. She does not and like often, that. <laughs> and here's another thing. Often she feels uh, in shame about not liking that. You know, women will whisper to me and they say, oh, he so, has so many emotions. I'm like disgusted. I'm yeah. turned off to him. <laughs> Ugh, I didn't want to, he wants to have sex with me, but he's so needy. Yeah. So when they have that reaction to a man, then they think if they were to go to their female side, a man would be disgusted. And it's just the opposite. Men want to be heroes. They want to feel like they can provide something uh, of meaning to her. Now, in that, he doesn't know how. Okay, so we're, <laughs> you know, we're in a different world. Exactly, now. You know, exactly. Now, here's why we're in a different world. Think about this. If women are more on their masculine side, to find balance, they have to go more to their female side, more than even their mothers, more than anybody else, which means this whole unknown territory of sensitivity, of vulnerability, of needing someone, of caring, needing aff affection, needing romance, needing uh, attention to detail and what she needs. This is like communication. My mother didn't care if my father didn't listen. <laughs> they didn't even talk that much, but he did his job to make money and she did the raising of the children and they were both happy. Because but see, that a, expectation was different back then, right? Like right. the expectation of the rose. This is exactly what we're talking about. If I can just interrupt for one second, yes, please, I don't want to lose the thought. You brought up something really important about just the way that, you know, a man is turned on and the way that, you know, we can just really simplify things. And I think that's another advantage that we're in right now. It's forcing us to just stay present because if you think about it, none of us know what tomorrow is going to bring. We are in a state of uncertainty. And with that, it allows us to be more present because that's what certain is right now. And if we can look at it more simplistic, like you're saying, and here's the thing about women too, we overcomplicate things way, way more for men, for you men. Like you men think way more simplistic than we do. We, we think in stories, we have like a zillion reasons for everything. And at the end of the day, the guy really just oh, well, I just wanted to have sex. Like there was no other reason other than just that, you know? Right. And so I think if we use this time as we're, you know, renegotiating the expectations to stay present, to look at the simple things and really focus on what makes us a man, what makes us a woman and connect 
connect on an emotional connect way that we've never had before. Really, this generation has become so dependent on like swiping and dating that they have forgotten how to just really emotionally connect. And I think some of the things you're saying really speak to that. So let, let me to... talk a little bit about how to emotionally connect because yeah. we are again, polarity. There's a polarity between yes. men and women with emotional connection. Often women will feel much more the need to connect. They have an awareness of their well-being is based on connection. And there's two types of connection. There's uh, think of a, a finger in a hole and I can connect in one way I can put my finger into the hole or I could use a finger and put it into make that person a hole okay I didn't do that so that's well. very sexual by the way <laughs> that got too sexual. Uh, is there's two ways to connect one is by my listening to you I'm going inside of you correct right if you reveal something that you don't tell other people, that's real intimacy, a part of you that doesn't, you don't show anybody. Okay, then I'm going into you and I'm connecting. Or I can reveal a part of me that I'm not sharing with anybody and you can come into me. That's connection. So one way of connecting is man listens to woman. Mm -hmm. Another way of connecting is woman listens to man. Now I wanna bring gender into it. Yes. That when I'm connecting by listening, I'm actually increasing my masculine energy. When you are sharing, revealing yourself, you're in your female energy. Do you get it? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to pause. I want all the women who are listening to this to hear what he just said. When you share, <laughs> the guys like that. Like, that's a good thing because. It's so many women, that's the biggest thing that I've detected in a lot of dates and, and where things fall apart is that women are so used to always listening and they don't share enough of themselves and then they either attract lopsided relationships or they end up in a place where they don't get their needs met, but really they never like started that way. So it's, I love that you just said that. So they're in that date, they ask a lot of questions. Yes. See, that's how they keep him talking. They exactly. ask him a lot of questions. Yes. And consequences of that is he doesn't know what she needs. All he wants to do is please her. So if she's asking him questions to please her, he's going to start talking about himself more. <laughs> right. And then, and, he, and then she's like, oh, he's so selfish. He didn't ask anything about me. That's right. But she yeah. did all these asking <laughs> questions. She set it up. It's an yeah. it's amazing, funny story. And he walks away and he doesn't know anything about her. Right. And if he doesn't, he hasn't connected with her. He only will experience bonding if he goes inside of her. He has to get to know her. And she has to be authentic and and revealing herself as much as she feels safe to do. But the point is, don't always try to please him. Let him please you. Let him give you what you need, which is to reveal, to come back to your female side is through sharing and revealing without seeking to control him. So you're not trying to control him by arguing with him. Or think about this. If you're a people pleaser and you're editing yourself you're actually seeking to control him, trying to get him to like you. Adjusting yourself so he will like you is a form of trying to control him. I mean, really, I, I, you, know, you know, I have one book called Mars Venus on a Date. And this one woman from New York, she tried five books and she, she said, I did all the books. I never got the right guy. But the one book I really liked was the John Gray book because it was the most fun. I got to be myself. And that is the key to it. And of course, you were saying before, right now, if you don't have the right guy, you can just enjoy practicing all these skills that are kind of the opposite of whatever you did in the past. And that's, exactly. that's what, you know, this is like such a big wake up call. And the other thing is, uh, you know, there's a, another dynamic, which is not just men listening to women. Women want to hear men talk too. Otherwise, you kind of feel insecure that I'm talking too much and so forth. Just don't ask him a lot of questions, but ask questions. What do you think? What happened? You want to focus a man more on what he thinks and what he did and what his experience. What was your experience? Never ask a man, what did you feel? Yeah. Just stay away from feelings, okay? Just, 
you, you won't be attracted as much as women think I want a man who's in touch with his feelings. What you want is a man whose feelings are in love with you. <laughs> so like, <laughs> what are your feelings? I can't live without you. I think you're amazing. You're beautiful. I love you. Okay, that's for sure. <laughs> if a, and if a man's not revealing that, then you want him to talk about his feelings so he'll get back to that place. And also because feelings are so valuable for women who are at least in touch with their femininity to feel that somebody's interested in your feelings. You know, if he doesn't ask what's going on, how did that feel? Or that must have felt. These are like skills to validate, to create safety for her to start to express what I felt or what I think and what I wish and what I want. That's there too. But particularly the masculine side of us is about what did I do? What did I not do? What did I accomplish? What did I conquer? What do I think? What would I experience? Keep it out of the feeling range. Because mm -hmm. once you get a guy to his feelings, either he just shuts up or, or he goes too far into the feeling and you'll get turned off. Because when he goes into feelings, the hormone that's being produced in his body is estrogen. And estrogen starts, that's his female energy starts to increase. It disconnects her from her female energy and moves her more into her male energy. That's okay if he can mirror it, but we're talking about just finding the right balance. It's not like I never talk about my feelings, but what you want, particularly in a date, is to keep a guy over in his masculine side, helps you stay on your feminine side. So there's a balance there. So you get these guys, and if you are the chief, that's what you call them, the chief? The, the chief, yeah. The chief. One if of you're a chief, there will be a tendency to attract more sensitive guys yes. that you will yes. become disgusted with later. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. I just, I know I just worked with a woman on that. Yeah. No, that's, that's opposites true. will tend to attract yeah. but when the opposites are out of balance. As you start to go in balance, then you'll realize it's not the right person for me. It just, it doesn't tend, it doesn't tend to last or there's a lot of lack of respect that she has for him over time. Well, but, I, think, I think too, at the end of the day, we all default to back to what we're confident in. And so if, like with the chief woman, she's very confident with what she knows, her knowledge, you know, kind of controlling things and that kind of thing. And so I find that a lot of times she'll default to that in ways of even conversation. Like I, I can't tell you how many conversations I've seen online. I, I, I have people give me their conversations online. Sometimes I'll even go into their profile and I see exactly the breakdown. I know it's amazing. What's happening. I love that. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So, and, and she will be so into, you know, what women have told me is I don't want him to fix me. I don't want him to fix me, but they do it. Chief women always give advice. They're always telling yes. you what you should do and what you shouldn't do and what you didn't do. And why didn't you do this? It's like <laughs> you get interrogated. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Well, are there any like exercises or things that, you know, both men and women can do in ways of practicing it, especially during this time, building well, let, that let emotional. Me, I, I'm sure there's some people listening who are also in relationships and they're exactly. together. Okay. Yeah. So let me give my COVID relationship tip here. Okay. This came up during COVID because the, the bottom line of, of my belief and experience of relationships is 80% of your happiness comes from your life, not dependent on your partner. You should be a whole person. Then you're ready to be with somebody and share and then you're dependent on them for the next 20%, okay? But if you're not full and you're 80%, their 20% won't make you feel really good. It will always be not mm. enough, not enough. If you have 80%, then it's 20%, which is about how much you can get from one intimate relationship in this concept. Think of it like vitamins. We need A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or A, D, B, C, D, E, F. Vitamin D is sunshine. So if you have all your other vitamins and go out into the sunshine, you'll feel fantastic. It brightens up your day. Isn't it amazing? But if you have none of the other vitamins, vitamin D won't do anything. See, you have to have the foundation of happiness that you have a, a set point of happiness that he was drawn to, excited by, whatever. And now he can take you happier. But her job and his job is to look to ourselves for happy. Now, that's 80-20, and to a certain extent, without knowing that, most couples who are somewhat together have that because you've got a job, you've got children, you've got driving your car around, you've got shopping. All these interactions are constantly causing you to come back to make yourself happy. I'm making myself happy. I'm making myself happy. I'm making myself happy. 
I mean, I get into, I get up in the morning, I, on a trip, I have to get up earlier. I don't want to get up. Oh no, you get up because you want to do this and this and this. Now I'm happy again. Then I'm in my car and the traffic is too much. I'm going to be a little late. I have to say to myself, Hey, it's okay. You gave yourself extra time. You'll be fine. You'll get there in time. And then I get there and there's a big long line. Oh, why did I have to take so long? I shouldn't have taken so long, but okay. I'm going to get on the plane. What's the big deal? So we're constantly taking responsibility to come back to our happiness. If you've been doing that all the time, then when your partner doesn't make you happy, you have that ability to be happy. Yeah. But suddenly we're not in that zone where we're not getting 80% of the nurturing and the support we need for having a life. We're going to be looking too much to our partner and they can't satisfy us. And then we become annoyed and irritated and bothered by them because we're not getting the stimulation we need. And so for this as couples who are living together, there's some really ugly fights happening right now. And there's a lot of violence happening mm. for couples. And first of all, what we have to realize is that if your partner was in a car accident and they couldn't walk for a while, you wouldn't say, if you love me, you'll walk. Okay. Uh. Yeah, we have to recognize that if, if people aren't getting the normal kind of support, they're not the normal person they are. That's not who they, they become something else. What happens, they go into fight or flight, stress levels, adrenaline responses, blood flow stops to the front part of the brain and conditioning takes over. The reason I say that is because when your partner misbehaves, particularly at a time like this, where I so stuck in the house, we often say, oh, they finally let out their true feelings or they really reveal their true colors. Yourself, they, yeah, yeah. But it's not their true feelings. It's not their true colors. It's what they feel when they're out of balance, not the real person when their heart is open. So we should keep that into consideration in terms of as we move beyond this. And then recognize our partner to a certain extent is in a wheelchair and we can support them with our expectations. We can't expect them to make us happy, but there is something we can do to supercharge our hormones. Because, and this is, this is the technique. Okay, so the technique is called uh, Genie in the Bottle. And did I say this last time? No, I don't okay. remember this. Genie in the Bottle is so much fun. It's 20 minutes. And in that 20 minutes, we're very much aware of the male-female polarity. Women need to feel someone cares about them, sees them, is there for them, has their back, willing to do their bidding as mm -hmm. you wish, as you wish. You know, the really cute little movie, Princess Bride? Yes. Oh, I love that movie. So he always said, as you wish, as you wish. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> felt very safe with him and cared for and so forth. That was very strengthening to her female side. And she was could ask for anything she wanted, basically. So genie in the bottle, and every man wants to feel like a hero. So he wants mm. to feel powerful, I can provide, all right? So in a genie in the bottle, for 20 minutes, he's gonna do her bidding. He's the genie, as you wish, as you wish. I'm very happy to, oh, my delight is, I'll run right away. You want a foot massage? I'll run upstairs and get the oils right now. Everything is immediate, immediate gratification for her. She doesn't do anything for herself except ask. So she Wait, only speak. 20 minutes? Can we expand that a little? You don't need more than 20 <laughs> minutes. You don't need more. No, it just sounds so good. I want to learn. It does. Oh, but you'll see. It's like literally eating a good meal. Yeah, your, yeah. Your hormones will come back into balance. And if they're already out of balance, that means you're feeling resistance or resentment towards your partner. You have to fake it for five minutes. In five minutes, your hormones come back into balance. You just pretend oh. you're acting. out. Okay, we'll play that silly, stupid game. And now you're going to he becomes a genie. Oh, as you wish, happy to do it. You see, that increases testosterone. Look what I can do. And it's always within 20 minutes. And it's within, so not 20 minutes would be, okay, I want you to always remember to turn out the lights. Okay, I want you never to do this. See, that's beyond this yeah. that's abstract action. He can't do that because that's the future of the past. Mm -hmm. So right now, what can he do for you? And I would suggest at that she not ask for communication skills at that point because they're already, their hearts are closed. So you shouldn't talk when your heart's closed to your partner, period. They can't hear you. If, you. if you've been having sex with somebody and you talk to them when your heart is closed, their heart will close. That's just reality. That's the, we have these mirror cells. Once you start having sex with somebody, whatever they feel, you will feel, particularly if it's a fight or flight feeling. Mm -hmm. So we should be realistic. If our heart's closed, this is not the time to solve problems, express discontent and so forth. Talk to somebody else. But meanwhile, this game stimulates huge amounts of estrogen for women because they need to feel 
I make a difference. I can ask for help. I have support. And he will do all these little things. And the objective is don't get him to do one thing because that's just one point of estrogen. You give her 25 roses or one rose, it has the same estrogen response. Now, this is biology. Yeah. If she has low estrogen, you can give her 50 roses or one rose, no response. If you have plenty of estrogen, one rose will have the same spike of estrogen that 50 roses will have. But 51 spikes, 50 roses, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, will now double your estrogen. So and 50 doesn't have to be 50, that's just a metaphor. But more is better. So in that 20 minutes, she needs to ask for lots of things, so little things. So you see him doing things and you experience, I can, in a sense, be selfish. I can ask what I want. I will get a positive response. And he will begin to experience how fun it is to say, as you wish, I'd be happy to, I'm <laughs> glad to, because yeah. he's going to get what he's been missing, which is this positive response from her. Because often when you're a chief or any, any woman, but I'll take that example, chiefs are always feeling like they know best. You should, you should, you should. So when you do it, the thought she has is, yeah, you should do that. That's just the way it is. And yeah. Kind of like, oh, that's great. Thank you. I'm so glad you did that for me. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> this I love is a it. really fun game to play if you have a partner and you're able to connect with them mm -hmm. in the house. And it could be if you're single and you're visiting someone, you could also play it. But particularly for married couples, this helps jump up those hormones because you can get stuck real easily into a low hormone place and you can't connect. The mm -hmm. other thing is expectations is just uh, we're talking about stress at a stressful time typically the way men cope with stress is to distance themselves and yeah. the way women cope with stress is to feel connection and the worst thing is to try to connect with somebody who's distancing themselves you see how that's just a setup for disaster and that's why mars venus books were so helpful just that one concept is like women you need connection but it doesn't have to be with him yeah <laughs> you just need connection pet your dog yes exactly <laughs> Go to your garden talk to a girlfriend have a therapist have a coach take yeah. a class online you know this is uh, a lot of people are saying that i see that they're saying take classes online and that's such a powerful thing because when you're mm -hmm. learning something new it's hard to stay in a stress response because see the only part of our brain that can learn something new is the prefrontal cortex and there's no stress there so if you're learning something new and then the gender aspect of this is learn something new that increases feminine energy or for men, learn something new that increases masculine energy. Beautiful. Oh, I just, I love everything you said. And I think also just on a practical level for, for you listening, if you're single, you can even gamify some of this stuff. And like if every day you challenged yourself with something that has been hard for you, let's say it was flirting, what if every day you just practice the art of flirting and got some great responses from men and you all of a sudden are starting to feel sexy and that confidence starts growing? I mean, that is much easier to focus on than I want to find my soulmate right now. <laughs> you know, like it's so... So, so important. It, for me, it's a series yeah. of positive dating experiences. Have fun. Yes. Use, uh, ironically, and I'm going to say this in the right sense, go out and use a bunch of men for your happiness and well-being. Yes, the, the, amen. The amazing, the amazing thing about that is I don't mind being used as long as somebody's enjoying me. <laughs> oh, my God. I just... <laughs> I just told a client that so funny, literally right before hopping on with you, she's trying to get rid of her ex. And I, you know, I was saying there is nothing wrong with going online and kind of using that male energy and just getting re-energized from, she's like, but I feel so bad. I'm like, they're not going to care that you're flirting with them. <laughs> they're going to love it. You know? So that, they, they that's want fantastic. the female energy. She wants the male energy and we, we are tools. See, this is, 90% of men are fine yeah. with it. There are some sensitive men who might get a little upset about what I'm saying, but basically all we want is use us, but reward us with your happiness, with your smile, with your appreciation. That is what fuels men. And what fuels women is that we as men can provide for them the types of emotional support that makes them happier. And so 
This is the goal. I love what you're saying. And not that many people are saying this. Stop looking for your soulmate and look for an opportunity to enjoy being with somebody. And if you're, here's the, the biology of it. If you're actually looking for a soulmate, your brain is already in a bias towards negativity. 100%. So, as soon as you want to buy yourself? a house, oh, yeah. Yeah. if yeah. you want to buy a house, you're going to look at, you know, does the plumbing work? What is the electric bills? Are there yes. cracks? Are there ants? Are there nuts? Are, are there rats? I mean, you should, if you've ever owned a house, you know how many things can go wrong. And so you're going to buy one, particularly you've been married before, <laughs> you're going to go in there and check everything. And right. so that just keeps you from having your heart open to allow this person to bond with you and you to bond with them. And maybe it goes nowhere, but at least you got to practice and you got to enjoy yourself. And he got to have a woman enjoying being with him. What a gift to a man. And by letting go of the outcome is usually when the magic happens too. Yes. Because yes, when you're always. trying to shoot too high and manage those really big expectations of the soulmate, that is when a lot of people find the hurt, find the, the dating burnout, you know, crash and burn in their relationships because that, that is too big, you know, that's so, yeah. Oh my and, gosh. And it's, it's about like we started out and you started yep. out beautifully talking about, it's not settling. It's adjusting your expectations, which allows you to be more in your, in the moment allows your heart to be open where suddenly you find that, oh, maybe all that glitter and all that glamour is not so important to me. What's really important is connecting with this person and they connect with me. You know, we are different people now. It, it, we, once, once our basic needs are met, our emotional needs become much more important. And so then once our emotional needs are more important, then we have to recognize, okay, he's got different emotional needs and you've got different emotional needs. And that's where the confusion is happening to today is because feeling passion, feeling love, feeling heard, feeling seen, feeling appreciated is 10 times higher now. This is what Maslow talked about when our survival needs yes. are met, suddenly our emotional internal needs become more important. And so now we have to learn a new way of doing it and dating without the pressure of, of, is this the right person or not the right person? You know, am I going to lose? You know, if, if you got to suddenly have a diamond, you go, oh, oh, I don't want to lose the diamond. It puts you into a fear response. Mm -hmm. So any nice guy, I'm talking to the women who's really interested in you, who's safe and has a job, use him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I think that's great words of wisdom to end on, to be honest. Like that was great. Um, and can I play genie with you? Yes. No, I thought you were supposed to say as you wish. Oh, as you wish. As you wish. <laughs> Come on. I wanted to see how that felt. Oh, that felt oh, really good. Okay. That was really good. Okay. Yeah, that was really yeah, awesome. Fine. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I just, I so love this interview and I could go on and on with you. And I, is it okay if I share this, this interview on YouTube and get it out to the world sooner than later? Because of, of course, that would be wonderful. Oh and my gosh. I, okay. If you let people also know, I'm doing my little, my Facebook live every day at, uh, oh, Mar yeah. at John Gray, Mars, Venus, Facebook. I do one hour a day and I, I do meditate with me on Monday. I teach meditation Tuesdays for growing in love relationships, Wednesdays, healing the heart, uh, mm. Thursdays, achieve your goals and Fridays, great sex. Oh my God. I love that. That's <laughs> awesome. And they can just access that through your Facebook. Yeah, Facebook, John Gray, Mars, Venus. Awesome. And is there any other um, kind of thing that you wanted to introduce to the audience? Well, I would love for people to know, uh, if, uh, I have a free online course at marsvenus.com. It's right there on the front page. It's called How to Get Everything You Want. And you get a specific course if you're a woman or a man or you're single or you're in a couple. So there's different courses that you immediately get depending upon your relationship status. And it's quite wonderful. It's our basic, most powerful ideas in a free class. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your perspective. And as always, it's super fun. Yeah, super fun. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kimmy Seltzer, of course. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know how to really get a handle on some of this stuff, first of all, check out John's amazing books, his course, his Facebook Live, everything. And also, 
I have an announcement. I have a free, well, it's not free, but I have a free quiz that you can take to see if you want to enter and get this new course that I have. It's an audio course. It's called This Maybe Why You Suck at Dating, where I'll help you learn to get out of your head and into his bed. And this course is filled with juicy audio kind of information. You're going to listen to it and access it right here, just like you listen to the podcast. You'll get my recordings, exclusive workbooks and guides, and a whole lot more. So if you have ever thought, I wish I knew what I was doing wrong after failed dating experiences, you will want to get this for sure. And stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day.